All I need is me and my, my crew Feeling like, feeling like I'm brand new You know how I, I, I do She preferred whiskey over beer because it worked faster. This, at least, was the story told to me by her pastor. Fully aware of parish vices and devices and lamented over the struggle to encourage turning to Christ in crisis, but self-medicating is just what life is. Suppressing the pressure to be better and face what eats at us and to cowardly boast in silent bravado in hopes that those that we have spoken to don't have rose-colored glasses that are broken. I'm no token. Folks around me have spoken in circles around not judging others to some degree. But how can we declare that honestly when we are hardwired for comparison and jealousy? Even those of us with the purest hearts and the most honest intentions have side-eyed a stranger whose name we didn't know whose shoes we hadn't walked in, whose story we hadn't been told. I had to check myself, catch myself as I watched her life be put up on the shelf, on display. Instead of making assumptions about what she should be doing better, would I be able to stand still in the same glass display case? Like, like if I were to say that it is no secret that I am overweight, Fat, obese, large, big boned. I once called myself the elephant in the room. They thought it was a play on words. I knew it was a play on truth. Life's weights took the form of weight. I began picking up pounds when I was eight, broke fasts, lunched, supped, and stuffed my face with insecurities. Abandonment, loneliness, lack of acceptance, unknowingly reckless with this blessing, this life, this body, and it haunts me. Not just as my nutritional mistakes drape from my frame, cellulite straddled with sorrow, heavy breathing laden with regret, but it taunts me. Has me second guessing seconds. Cautious about indentations on couch cushions, glares at chairs in hopes that I can fit. Self-conscious about stairs that don't even exist. I hate going shopping, because it reminds me of a place I promised myself I wouldn't go a place called That Big. Whispers of fitness advice from perfect strangers boom like 808s and I have trained my face in the peaks of my smile to behave as wavelengths at least three decibels higher but not nearly as loud as the scream that just wants to jump out from inside her and say, do you know how much I hate flying? And do you know how often I have to? I could easily blame society. Make my bed of pity in between the sheets of a magazine spread, but not before I address what's inside of me. So instead of demonizing the width of an airplane street, of an airplane seat, or grumbling frustration about plus size sections in department stores, or despising the stride of my hips and thighs as I walk down North Charles Street, the question becomes, why is it that every time I'm lonely or feel like I need to be rewarded, I eat. It's deep. Just like that woman who's drinking for peace and sleep. She cannot be convinced that she does not need it. Why fix what isn't broken is something like a creed to her. Funny how what she tried soon became a need to her. And when I look in the mirror, the person that I see is her. How am I any different? How am I any better? Why am I out here trying to get it and something inside her won't let her? I pray for her in my letters. To God, please, help her get better. Give her the courage and strength that she needs to do what she should for herself. And in your funny way, help her see that the beauty of the battle is just as beautiful as a sunset at sea, settling like the water in her eyes every time she speaks in God. As you're blessing her, please help me. Come away with me, I 